All right, here we are, church family. It's in between Christmas and New Year's, and so many of you, I'm sure, are like, uh, not another New Year's resolution. That's the last thing I need. I eat way too much, and there's no way I'm going to lose that weight again. But here we are. So it's okay. But this year, kind of like last year, I wanted to get us into more of God's Word. So I'm titling this, hopefully you can still see it. There it is. Daily Devotions. I want to look at the how the why and the what exactly we're talking about. And I'm trying to show this, talk about this, explain this on a scale of levels. So if you're um, just cracking open God's word, looking at the Bible for the first time, or maybe for the a, a new time, or if you've uh, been in the church for years, understood so much of the rich, um, glorious, nourishing meat of scripture, then there's still room to grow and there's friendships and Bible studies and accountability and small group and Sunday schools and all of those centered around the preach word of God, which is our life's goal. So here we go. Fast and furious. I'm going to try to bring some of these things to us so that we can get a better sense. The first resource I want to mention is the Bible project, which this one's great on a couple levels, so I'm going to talk really fast so we can get through some of these. This one could be really good if you're brand new to the Bible. You want to know what the Bible is. There's an intro video to the Bible. There's uh, different genres. What are they about? Narrative, poetry, uh, prose. There's all these kind of things. And then there's, a, there's overviews. And then what the Bible Project has done is given us a five-day Bible reading plan which it'll come out as it says December 26th. So that gives you a hint. I'm recording this before December 26th. But anyway, that's very beside the point. But this one's really good because it, it's an app. You can also get an app that literally has the a short overview, a video of like if you're be, beginning Leviticus, you're like, I don't know what's going on in Leviticus. What do I need to understand? How, how do I need to see some of these themes play out? The big theme of God, God's holiness, here's how it looks and it kind of chunks up the big uh, picture of the book or how this fits into the meta narrative of God's scripture and it gives you the the reading for specific days right there in the text that's a really helpful one to start off with for some of you you are going to be the bible eater you're like i can't devour enough of this this is great let me chew on more and you might also like the structure here's one among many i'll show you in a little bit that show you uh you can you know, circle X out the days as you go through them. It's got the uh, the Pentateuch, the first five books, the historic books, wisdom, prophets, and then the New Testament all into uh, different days of the week. So you don't even have to do them um, exactly on, you know, January 31st. I should be on this reading. So you can schedule it off how you best are going to do that. Here's another wonderful one or set of reading plans from Ligonier. They put out some incredible resources, but also on their website. And oh, by the way, I'll put all of these links to all of these websites under the notes on YouTube and in Facebook. So you'll be able to click on the click on those yourself, get there. So there's a 52 week, there's a um, five days, five times, five verses, one, there's about there's a chart, there's chronological, which I think is really helpful for some of us understanding like when the Psalms were written in connection to David's own life, for example, or to the life of the Old Testament Israelites, one that can focus on discipleship, uh, four readings, one Genesis, Psalms, Matthew, Acts. Very rich to connect those things, Old and New Testament, and a, a praise psalm or lament psalm or reorienting psalm in the middle. So lots of good things there. One I like also is the CCF. This is getting a little more into podcasts and some other uh, nourishing thing that will point us back to God's Word. So maybe in a, in a alongside reading scripture will be to listen to things to help us to chew on it to apply it more directly where life and scripture meet is a podcast of the christian uh, counseling and education foundation ccef which is a wonderful set of resources that they have um, so this is a podcast you can get to and what i really like about this they have different ones different topics obviously why should i read leviticus that might be a great intro into Let's read Leviticus. So that would be a good thing together. Uh, or what if counseling isn't encouraging? Some of us that, uh, well, first of all, here's my caveat. Everybody needs counseling pretty much all the time. And I'm not a counselor, so I'm not earning any uh, income side cash by saying that. But I think it's so incredibly helpful. And that comes on a range. I don't know if you mean professional like psychological counseling. I mean, getting the wisdom of another believer. 
Getting a good friend that can speak into your life and you can do the same. Accountability, uh, encouragement, uplifting, those kind of counselings. It happens at a lot of different levels. Um, that's a great one. Is it okay to want affirmation? Maybe that's, I don't know if they knew that I was about to read this and they're pulling it up. That's one of the things I wrestle with is seeking others affirmation to speak good things to my life, even if it's not uh, applicable or helpful. That's an issue. And then down here at the bottom, they have a lot of different topics that you can uh, help with. For some of those days, it's good to have that truth of God's word being spoken into our life. One other app that I've recently found, thanks to my wife, and has been incredibly valuable, is for me to organize my prayer time, both into um, categories, so groups at church, groups in the neighborhood, my family, all of those things, but also the individual people's and to be able to track those. So this app called the Prayer Mate has been really helpful. That's not my actual family. Don't worry, I don't have a family member named Elizabeth, but it's really good to organize prayer into different categories. And you can even share it across small groups or things like that that we've done in our small group. Another app that I found very nourishing and encouraging comes out of John Piper's website, desiringgod.org, but it's called Solid Joys Daily Devotional. That's the logo. That's what it looks like on the app store. So the S and a J. And it's got, you know, I think all of them are a four or five minutes, some three minutes long. Piper's own uh, text you can read, you can hear his voice if you want to do that. And he always connects it so incredibly well to scripture and to who God is and what he's about in the world and and the truth of reality and the hope of eternity. And it's it's all there and it's, it is joyful, but it's not fake, happy, happy, joy, joy. It's deep, rich, abiding joy. So good. The last one I want to bring up is The World and Everything in It. This is a podcast by the World News Group, a Christian news organization. And I bring this one up because I think I've heard this time and time again from a lot of different sources, different perspectives have suggested and mentioned to me, we just have so much other information that's so prevalent, that's so rampant, that's screaming, shouting voices at us about what is going on and what is true about what's going on. And I think that's that's at best distracting and it's worth, at worst, it's building a false worldview, a false narrative about first what is going on and then what is a Christian's place in that? What is God doing? What? How is he at work in all of these uh, earthquakes and tornadoes and kidnapping, kidnapping in Haiti and, and terrorist things in Nigeria and buildup of troops in Ukraine and China, you know, building new islands in the South China Sea, all these things. What do we do with all of that? And the World News Group does a great job of framing the world in a way that is true and accurate, but also understands our place under God's sovereignty. Hugely important perspective. And they have a lot of really just good, helpful, uh, thoughtful Christians uh, that show us what is going on in the world. So I've really valued uh, some of their things. They have a great podcast, The World and Everything in It. They have a, another really fun one that our kids have started enjoying. Uh, I don't see it right now, but uh, it's called The World Watch. And if I could find it, I would pull it up for us because it's kind of funny. It's fun. They do 10 minute video, kind of like CNN 10. Uh, if your kids at public schools get to see that, but this is a really good one. Um, it's worth pulling up, so let me see if I can pull, pull it up right now. And while I'm doing that, here it is, World Watch News. Uh, it's a lot of fun because um, it's 10 minutes. You can stream it for free, as you see there. Uh, it's it's Ben Bash. He does he does a great job of exactly what this quote says. Whatever the news, the purpose of the Lord will stand and showing us, yeah, we want to be truthful about the, what the news is. We want to call reality what it is. Sometimes hard, sometimes joyful, sometimes inspiring, sometimes depressing, but we want to see God's hand at work in all these things. So what I want to uh, leave off with is how and why am I going to be about some devotion? Well, how do I fit all of this into my time? Uh, some of us, that's going to mean setting aside some time of day, some, whether it's morning, uh, at lunch, before I go to bed, with my kids, with my spouse, uh, alone, getting out on a walk or a run or a jog, whatever. Uh, 
to, to be purposeful about that time that I, that I can devote to. That's literally what devotion should mean. I get to devote time to my Savior and hearing from Him. And so that's why devotions usually have a, a significant amount of their time to, to be in God's Word, to actually hear from Him, to understand who He is and what He's talking about, what He's doing in our lives. And then it's also involved in prayer. So uh, sometimes that can be very purposeful, like prayer that's uh, organized. That's I'm praying for individual people, specific things, for God's work in my own heart, for me to understand more of God. Um, and then I want to briefly touch on why is this so important in the life of believers and in the church? And I think uh, especially in our our swirling world around us, whether it's consumerism or materialism or naturalism or humanism or politicalism or any of these nationalism, these things that so saturate our lives and they influence our thinking and our hearts, our desires, our motivations, all of these things. It's important that we hear and hear in a way that is the most significant voice speaking into our lives. That needs to be God. It needs to be his word. We have to stand on this solid rock because everything else is sinking sand. And I think we've seen that more, uh, really, we've really seen that this last couple of years. And of any time that I've been alive, at least, I think it's more, it's important that we get, get into God's word to have our, our devotion, our hearts devoted to God. And there's a lot of ways to do that. One final thing I want to leave us with is is how to keep that up. It's not to be really good about New Year's resolutions, in my humble opinion. It is to be intentional, to plan it out, to prioritize it, and to keep ourselves accountable. So call up a friend, call up a neighbor, call up a, a brother or sister in Christ and say, hey, I'm starting off a new Bible reading plan or a new prayer list or a new uh, time with God every day that I'm going to devote eight minutes to looking at this app and and to thinking about this and uh, will you ask me every thursday how i'm doing will you text me and say how was your devotion this morning what were you reading what was it about share it with me i think that level of accountability could do incredible things and i i would appreciate that and uh, i know it would be good for you and for our church and especially for the work that god is doing in and among us so with that said, if there's any questions, if there's any concerns, if there's any other Bible devos or uh, prayer apps or any of those things that are helpful for you, please don't hesitate to email me or get in touch with me or post it on uh, our, our uh, YouTube or Facebook or links or any of those things. So hope this is encouraging. Hope that it helps, that it sticks, and I hope that you get to know your Lord and Savior more in 2022. Amen. Have a blessed year ahead.